TikTok. Welcome to another episode of Shot in the Dark. I am your host, John Ceno Evil here. Let's get right down to it. AW Dark. Somebody must have been listening. Um, <laughs> between last week and this week, they've made some changes. Uh, a lot shorter. The show was only a little over an hour. There's no more entrances for the enhancement talent, and a lot of the matches are a lot shorter. So it looks like they are hopefully, hopefully, not doing any more three-hour shows and sticking to no more than one hour. One. One hour and a half tops is what I'll give them. So we have Excalibur, Taz, and Anthony Gogo on commentary. Our first match, a rare appearance from John Moxley. Yes, the IWGP US Heavyweight Champion John Moxley with a record of 27-1-1 versus John Cruz with a record of 0-1. Quick match. He wins by submission with a joke. Nice to see Moxley pop up on here every once in a while. I think it's his third appearance or so. Next match, we have Bear Country with a record of 2-1 and one versus Chaos Project with a record of 7-8. and eight. So Serpentico, who's also John Cruz, wrestles back-to-back. Poor guy. Hopefully they weren't recorded back-to-back. Uh, Bear Boulder gets the pin on Serpentico after he splashes Bear Bronson, who uh, jumps off on top of him from his shoulders. Match number three, the Blade and the Butcher with a record of 2-0 and all versus Jake, Sage Patrick, and Sage Scott, who is making his debut. Uh, they start fighting before the bell even rings, and Butcher and Blade, they didn't even take their gear off. They win with the Drag the Lake, with Butcher pinning Sage Scott, and then after, they get on camera, and they call out Bear Country. So it looks like we might have this match coming up soon. Match number four, Shauna with a record of 3-1 and one versus Renee Michelle, making her AEW debut. Uh, you might remember Michelle as the wife of Drake Maverick, who popped up on WWE and Raw. She was also in the Mae Young Classic, and most recently, she was on Impact. Uh, Shauna does get the win quickly here with a released Tiger Suplex. Match number five, Alex Reynolds and John Silver of the Dark Order with a record of 1-0 and all versus VSK and Eric James, who is also making his debut. Uh, Silver gets the pen on VSK after him and Reynolds hit the Dark Destroyer. Match number six, Jurassic Express with a record of 18 and 6 versus Baron Black and John Skyler. Very quick, less than a minute. Jungle Boy hits the assisted powerbomb on Baron Black for the pin. Match number seven, Ty Conti with a record of 4 and 1 versus Vert with Vixen with a record of 0 and 2. This is a rematch from a couple weeks ago on Dark. Another extremely dominant win by Ty Conti. She wins by submission in less than two minutes. Match number eight, Eddie Kingston with a record of seven and six versus Aaron Solo with a record of 0 and 1. Kingston gets to win here on one of the newest members of the Nightmare family with a spinning back fist. Match number nine, this uh, surprised me. Ricky Starks with a record of 1 and 0, accompanied by Hook versus Casey Navarro with a record of 0 and 2. Literally, as the bell rings, Starks hits the spear and wins within five seconds. And uh, he literally just jumped right on commentary after this for the rest of the show. Match number 10, Brandon Cutler with a record of 1-1 one and one versus Mysterioso, making his AEW debut. I've been watching Mysterioso pretty much every week for the past year on New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, so nice to see him on a different show here. This is the longest match of the show, uh, and Cutler wins with a springboard elbow drop. Match number 11, Powerhouse Hobbs with a record of 2-0 and all with Hook again versus Ryzen with a record of 0-4. Another uh, Team Taz quick match here. Hobbs destroys Ryzen in less than a minute with the Power Slam. And our main event. Match number 12, Nick Camarado, another member of the Nightmare family, who was accompanied by Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, with a record of 2-4 and four versus Fuego Del Sol with a record of 0-2. And, and uh, another big man here looking dominant with a quick win with another power slam. That is it. No match on the show went, less than seven, uh, went more than seven minutes, so I'm very uh, happy with this turnout. Uh, <laughs> no backstage segments, no talking talking uh, segment with um, Britt Baker, uh, waiting room segment, sorry. So uh, I'm actually happy. I'm probably going to jinx it. I'm probably going to get about 27 matches next week with a four-hour show. But maybe one of the reasons why this show was so short was because AEW had another show. Um, I know back when they had the Women's Tag Team Tournament, they would have matches on YouTube, and they're doing the same thing here with the AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament. The first round out of Japan uh, was on YouTube on Monday. These matches are all taped in the Ice Ribbon Dojo, and you have Excalibur on commentary here solo. They also added a, a Japanese track later on, but I listened to the, uh, the English commentary. And the referee for all four matches is somebody by the name of Tommy. Our first match... Yuka Sakazaki, you might remember her. A lot of uh, familiar names here that we haven't seen in AEW in a while. But the magical girl, Yuka Sakazaki, with a record of 1-1 one one in AEW. And she defeated the youngest girl in this tournament with the age of 21, Mei Suruga. And she pinned her with the magical girl 450 splash. Nice to see uh, uh, Sakazaki back here. Match number two, Emi Sakura with a record of 3-4, three and, four, three and four, defeated Venny with the Tiger Driver. Um, Sakura, she still has her Freddie Mercury Queen-inspired gear. She even does like the um, We Will Rock You chant. 
with a couple of uh, talent that was ringside. And after the match, Venny smacks uh, Sakura as uh, she was a little upset in her defeat. This is the longest and probably my favorite match of the show. So if you get to watch one match out of these four, I would definitely do this one. Match number three. Ryo Mizunami, with a record of 1-0, defeated Maki Ito by submission with a head and arm triangle. Uh, Maki Ito, if you've never seen her before, she sings and dances her own entrance. A sight to see. Uh, go out of your way to, to see this. I know she's really popular on Twitter. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that she lost here. Um, but overall, she's very fun to watch wrestle. Hope we, hopefully, you'll see more of her. And our main event, uh, Aja Khan, with a record of 0-1. You might remember her way back from WWF. She used to be in matches with Alundra Blaze and Bertha Fay, And she was in AEW as well. She gets to win here over Rin. Kadukura. I apologize if any of these names I got wrong. <laughs> she pins her with a diving elbow. Pretty quick win here. We go to NXT UK. We start the show uh, with Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster coming out of the Hunt's locker room where we see that the wild boar has been taken out from tonight's street fight. So they announced that Eddie Dennis will take his place in the main event. Michael Satomura making her NXT UK debut, comes out, defeats Isla Dawn. Uh, they bring up the fact that how the boss, Sasha Banks, wants to wrestle the final boss, Maiko, but she wants at least three weeks to prepare before it happens. We see Kaylee Ray watching on in this match, and uh, Maiko wins in a little over five minutes with the Scorpio rising, and she has a stare down with Kaylee Ray eyeing that NXT UK women's title, so hopefully we'll see that match soon. We go earlier this week, we see both Rampage Brown and Joe Coffey in a boardroom where they get called in by Johnny Saint, who pretty much announces that next week, Brown and Coffey will go one-on-one. We see a video of Danny Luna with her talking about how she's one of the strongest women in NXT UK, and they show highlights of her lifting weights and some of her matches. We get another video, this one from Aoife Valkyrie, a real eerie, dark video, pretty much hyping up some sort of return from her. And we get a quick insert from Michael saying that she is ready for Kylie Ray. We go over to the Supernova Sessions with Noam Dar. Today's guest, today's guest is Sam, uh, Shaw Samuels, who Dar speaks about how they are lifelong friends and they act all chummy chummy. Uh, Samuels is still upset that they called him Ed Harvey when he debuted and said that half the roster wouldn't be in NXT UK if it wasn't for his hard work. Noam is trying to make his own match for Shaw, but Sid Scala comes out and says that he can't do that. But Noam suggests that Shaw Samuels represents the Heritage, so he should fight A-Kid for the Heritage Cup, and Sid Scala said that he will take that into consideration. We go backstage with Nina Samuels, who accepts Sia Brookside's rematch in two weeks, but only on the terms that whoever loses the match must be the winner's personal assistant for one month. We get an, uh, uh, we get an update with Trent Seven, who's uh, pretty much working hard trying to trim down to uh, qualify for the Cruiserweight title match. Piper Niven defeated a uh, male. Uh, Joseph Connors comes out really quick here to try to distract uh, Niven, but it doesn't work as Piper is able to take out a male pretty quick with the Piper driver. They announced in two weeks we will get Gallus defending the tag titles against Pretty Deadly, who won the match a couple weeks ago for the number one contendership. Also next week, Ben Carter will be in action. And also, it's a made official, A-Kid will defend the Heritage Cup against Shaw Samuels and Joe Coffey versus Rampage Brown. Our main event, Mark Andrews, Flash Morgan Webster versus Primate and Eddie Dennis, who's substituting for Wild Boar uh, in a street fight. If they start the match from the back, pretty wild. We get a, at one point we get a twenty foot high moonsault from Andrews. Pretty crazy. Uh, we see chairs, candlesticks, tables, all the usual. And uh, Andrew and Webster hit a pair of shooting star presses to get the win and possibly putting an end to this feud. 205 Live. We see Mansoor in his first match since December, teaming up with Ashanti the Adonis, defeating Chase Parker and Samir Singh. Um, so Ever Rise and Bollywood Boys, known as the Bali Rise combination, they still came up short in this match. Adonis gets the pin on Samir after the long kiss goodnight. Jake Atlas defeated Tony Nice. Uh, Arya Davari was on commentary. He tried to get involved here. He even threw his chain in the ring for Nice, but August Gray ran out to take it from him, causing Atlas to roll up Nice for the win. New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, J.R. Kratos defeated Jordan Clearwater. Bateman defeated Clark Connors. And Chris Dickinson and Damian Limelight defeated Ren Narita and TJP, with Dickinson making TJP submit. submit. And after the match, Dickinson and Narita started to brawl, setting up a possible feud. On Ring of Honor this week, we saw LSG defeated Tony Deppin. And pretty interesting main event here. We had four members of the foundation, uh, Jay Lethal and Red Titus, teaming up with Wheeler Yuta, who's in consideration to possibly join the foundation, defeated uh, Jonathan Gresham and Tracy Williams, also from the foundation, who recruited Fred Yehai. Uh, Titus pinned Yehai. So pretty much this is like a, um, a way to kind of like see if Yuta and Yehai qualify for the foundation. On WWE main event, we see Dana Brooke defeated Peyton Royce, and Ricochet defeated Umberto Carrillo. WWE Network Editions for the week. Uh, really quick, last week, they added the last show of Evolve 146, which is the last, for now, the last tape show from Evolve. They also had a Best of Michael Satamora, 
uh, included matches with her versus Jordan Grace, Danny Luna, and Ginny. And uh, there was an episode of ICW Fight Club. This week, we went to the beginning. We had the first ever episode of Evolve back from January 2010 with matches such as Davey Richards versus Kota Ibushi and Kyle O'Reilly versus Bobby Fish. We also had Chuck Taylor, Ricochet, Mercedes Martinez, Johnny Gargano, TJP. So many names that we see now on AEW and NXT WWE making their start here in Evolve. We also got a Best of NXT in Progress Volume 3 with Tommaso Ciampa versus Zack Sabre Jr., War Machine versus British Strong Style, Tony Storm versus Candice LeRae, Keith Lee versus Flash Morgan Webster, Donovan Dijak versus Kyle Ashmore, Matt Riddle versus Mark Andrews, and Ginny versus Dakota Kai. We also had another episode of ICW Fight Club, and starting this week, we'll be getting some new Progress shows, starting with Progress Chapter 104. Uh, we'll also be getting Evolve 2, and uh, they're going to continue with these Evolve shows from the beginning, it looks like, as well as new shows from Progress. And we might also maybe get some new Evolve shows. little rumor that they might be some sort of a rebranding or something in the future, so stay tuned for that. Also this week, check out my reports for Impact Wrestling's No Surrender, as well as Bloodsport 4. And this coming weekend, I will have a report for Bloodsport 5 with the main event of John Moxley versus Davey Boy Smith Jr. That should be a really good match. That is it for this week. Catch me here next week for another episode of Shot in the Dark. Mm-hmm.